the Living Word broadcast. The Bible says that this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Pastor Dwayne McFedders of the Living Word Church, located at 7160 State Avenue, right in the heart of Kansas City, Kansas. Amen. I count it nothing short of a privilege to be able to come before you on today. And I'd like to take this time to thank each and every one of you that have tuned in. Now, would you join me for a word of prayer as we ask the Lord to bless the message on today? Father, we thank you, we bless you, and we praise your holy and righteous name. God, we acknowledge you as the source of all that's good and all that's good in us. I ask that you would move in a mighty way on today, that you would speak through me, Lord, and give me clarity of speech and explanation. I ask, oh God, that someone's heart, mind, and soul and spirit might be drawn towards you, Lord. God, that you would be lifted up in everything we say and do on today. God, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We pray for all of those that are less fortunate than we are, all of those that are sick and and shut in, Lord, whatever the situation may be, O oh God. We ask that you would send forth the spirit of encouragement and let it rest upon each and every one of your people everywhere. And we're going to be careful, Lord, to continue to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Like I said before, thank God for you. Amen. I pray that something would be said on today that would be a blessing and a help and an encouragement to you and to yours. Amen. We want to go right to the scripture on today. We want to go to the book of Hebrews, the third chapter of Hebrews, and starting at that first verse. But right before that, I'd like to give you what the uh, uh, the message is on today. The message is consider him. Consider him. Amen. Him being Jesus. And the scripture reads thusly. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, then right here in this, this particular verse starts out with the word wherefore. Wherefore and is another reason I feel that Paul is, is the author of this epistle. Uh, Paul used to use wherefore and therefore a lot uh, as a sort of a hinge or a way of cementing uh, to present that which is logical. Amen. Amen. Uh, the verse says, wherefore is even more uh, than that in this particular verse, uh, because it's like a swinging door which goes back and forth uh, in both ways. Or it can be looked at as a marker when you come in on a highway or, or in on a main uh, intersection. It's like a, uh, like a warning uh, to look both ways. The word wherefore looks back at what the, the particular writer, Paul, has already said, and it looks forward to what he will say. Amen. Now let's go to uh, uh, and look at this. It says consider. Consider. What does it mean to, to consider? Consider him. It's, it's a Greek word that's translated by, in English, it's, it's, it means to, con, to convey the fact of a faithful attention, okay? Giving of time and perceiving thoroughly with the mind. It's, 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 a, sufficient, it's a sufficient word, uh, and we need to recognize that it means we are to give careful and serious and prolonged thought uh, to this word. Consider, consider the apostle. What, what does that, what does the writer mean when he says consider the apostle? Uh, the Lord Jesus was, was an apostle in the very basic meaning of the word. Uh, I don't think we need to go any further than that, but we will. After what is, what is a, an apostle? 
An apostle is one that is sent. For God so sent his, his son, his only begotten son into the world to, uh, that we might be saved. We know the scripture, St. John 3.16. Jesus was sent from God to this earth. Consider the apostle because he was sent from God. Amen. He is a messenger. He is God's messenger. He is the revelation of God. Consider him. He comes from God as an apostle. Amen. So, amen. So, I just kind of want to explain that just a little bit as we get on into the uh, scripture. And then it goes to say uh, about, about the high priest. Now, Jesus is our high priest. Who, who is he? He's Jesus Christ. And we're getting into the, we're coming into the season of the Passover. And we need to get our mind stayed on him. We need to focus on what this is all about. Uh, we, we speak of the plan of salvation. The plan of salvation. A plan is something that's put in place in order to bring about a desired uh, uh, outcome. Amen. The emphasis on his humanity here. Amen. He's our high priest here on this earth. Amen. And then the second verse says, uh, that, uh, who was faithful to him that appointed him. God the Father appointed as also Moses was faithful in all his house. Mm. So the Lord Jesus was faithful to him that appointed him. Amen. He was faithful as he came down to this earth to represent God to, to, uh, to excuse me, to represent God to man. And he is faithful as he represents us to God. Amen. 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 And then we're going to go over to the 12th, the, the 12th chapter, verse 1. The 12th chapter and verse 1. And the Bible reads thusly. Remember the message. Consider him. When you're going through, consider him. When you think about Jesus, consider what it was all about. Why he came in the first place. And all that he would go through. Amen. So that we might be saved. And the Bible reads in the first verse of the of the 12th chapter of Hebrews. It says this. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. That's verse, that's amen. That's verse 2. Now watch this. Now watch this. We're going to go over to the third verse in that 12th chapter. It says for this, it says this, For consider him, see, there it is, that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Come on, somebody. Lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. Now look at this word, that, that word, uh, uh, I want to look at something here. The word patient and endured are from the same root. Trouble generally produces patience and endurance. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Now watch this. If you go back, around that third chapter, I want to point out something here to you. How that I thank God that he does not save us by the law. If he did, I, myself, and you, and everyone else would have to admit that we have, that we have failed 
and that we have to find another route. But thank God that there is another route. And it's called the grace of God. And he's called Jesus Christ. We need to consider him in every situation that we find ourselves in in this life. Every disappointment, every up, every down, every victory, every triumph. Consider him because he's the reason. And the reason why he came in the first place. Because of the love of God. Amen. That's the reason why he came. And we need to understand that Jesus is superior to all the, those that are earthly men. Moses, Abraham, all the prophets, everybody. Jesus is superior to all of them. We are to consider him in every situation, in every circumstance. Consider him when you feel like giving up. Consider him all that he went through. Consider him. Hey Amen. When you feel like walking away from your marriage, consider him. Consider him when, when it seems like everybody's coming against you. Consider him when it feels like you are uh, 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 insignificant. Consider him. Understand that he died for us. He came here for that purpose. And he didn't waver from that. He knew when he came what it was all about. Amen. And I was, um, I found this beautiful poem that describes exactly what I'm talking about. As we're coming up on this Passover season, amen, and it's all about him. It's all about Jesus, how he bled on the cross and died for our, for our sins. He took our place, friends. He was atonement for our sins. Amen. Even so much that even after all that, that he had went through and all the, the unjust punishment that he took, he still was able to cry, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And I found this poem, and I thought it was so beautiful and so fitting for this, for this message on today. There's so much more, and we're going to be talking about some more of this uh, during this month. But I thought it was so, so uh, um, prevalent for this particular message. And it goes this way. We ought to consider him. Consider him in his person. Consider him in his performance. His work upon the cross. Ah, and some, some, someone put this poem together. And I want to, I want to read that. I'm not going to be before you long today. But I want to read this form, this poem. It says this. No matter what you're going through. When the storm is raging high. When the tempest rends the sky. When my eyes with tears are dim. Then my soul consider him. When my plans are in the dust. When my dearest hopes are crushed. When it's past each foolish whim. Then my soul consider him. When with dearest friends I part. When deep sorrow fills my heart. When, plan racks, when pain racks each weary limb. Then my soul, consider him. When I track my weary way, when fresh trials come each day, when my faith and hope are dim, then my soul, consider him. Clouds or sunshine, dark or bright, Evening shades or morning light. When my cup flows over the brim, then my soul consider him. This was, poem was written by an author uh, unknown. But when I read it, 
It encouraged my soul. It gave me to take a, a different attitude, a different look when I find myself going through, when I find myself maybe leaning into a, wanting to attend a pity party that was called on by me. I thank God for each and every one of you that have tuned in today. And I want to say to each and every one of you, no matter what you've been through in life, and no matter what you're going through right now, just consider him. Consider him, how much he loves us, how much he loved us and how much he loves us now to answer the call of God, his father, to come down. He so he came into this world that we might be saved, not to condemn us, not to beat us over the head, amen, but to give us a way to the father. And I thank God for it. I thank God for the members of the Living Word Church, amen. And it's our prayer that on April the 4th, which is Easter Sunday or Passover Sunday, to be able to come back into our church in person. Now, I understand and I know that there are churches that have already been back into in-person service, but this is the day that the Lord gave us. And I'm looking forward to it. Spread the word, let the people know. But there will be, there will be protocol when we come in. Amen. And be willing to do that which is called upon you to do. Amen. That we might continue to lift up and serve the Lord. Amen. I thank God for the message on today that he's given me. Amen. I thank God for the encouraging, uh, the, the, the garment of encouragement that he's given me. Uh, I feel like running on. And I pray that, that you feel the same. I feel, I, I pray that you would reach down on the inside and let the word come up in you. Let me tell you something before I let you go. Just because you are a church member does not mean that you are saved. The, to be saved is to acknowledge Christ and amen in all your ways. To accept him as your Lord and Savior. To understand and know that you have to consider all that was done for you and all that was done for me. Understand and know that he died on the cross that we might be saved. I thank God for Jesus and I thank God for you. I want to leave this opportunity now for someone that may be listening in today that may not be saved. This is your time. This is your opportunity. Amen. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Amen. Seek him while he may be found. We're going to pray a prayer. And whether you are already saved or, and, and, and have backslidden, you, you were saved at one time and you, and you backslid, I want you to know that, that Jesus re will receive you back into the fold. All you have to do is come with a sincere heart. And God will bless you. God will receive you. He's that kind of God. Because the Bible says that it's not his desire that no man be lost. But you must consider Jesus, and you must be serious about it. It's not enough just to come to church. It's not enough just to be on the church rolls. But he has to be down in your heart. You have to have a mind to do that which is pleasing in his sight. Now Moses and all the great men of God, they made mistakes. Moses made mistakes. Amen. Different, the, all, all the prophets, some of those, they made mistakes. Amen. But because God is not his desire that we be lost, amen, he doesn't, he thank God for his grace. That's why it came in the first place. Amen. His grace came that we might be saved. Amen. And so if you would pray this prayer with me from the sincerity of your heart, no matter where you may find yourself, and you put your own words to it, but let this be the main structure of it. Lord Jesus, Wherever I am in you, Lord, and you know and I know that you would come into my heart even now and save me, wash me, cleanse me from all unrighteousness. In the mighty name of Jesus, if, if I'm a backslider, Lord, Lord, receive me back into the fold. If I'm coming for the first time, Lord, wash me in the precious blood of Jesus, for I acknowledge my sins. 
and I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I believe that he hung on the cross and died for my sins. And Lord, I, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I acknowledge you as the one that makes it possible that I might be saved on today. Come into my heart, Lord, and save me now. Forgive me of everything I've ever said, done, amen, or even thought or imagined. And Father, I thank you for it right now. I will give me to consider Jesus in everything, in every day, every moment, to acknowledge him as the source of all that I need in this life. And Father, I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Praise God. If you prayed to God in your own way, with that structure, acknowledging that we're where we are, and God knows where we are, and that's all he wants is a sincere heart. There's no sense in us trying to shut God. Don't think just because you have a Bible under your arm and you go to church, and you sit on the first row, and wherever you may be, or wherever uh, 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 you may listen to a sermon on the on the radio, or, or watch one on Zoom, or whatever, that does not save you, my friends. But if you truly, if you truly consider Jesus and all that He went through, that we might be saved. That's what it's about. And I want you to know that. We are those of us that are here at the Living Word Church. We're praying for you. Amen. We're lifting you up to God. And you can make it. We can make it because God has made the way through his son, Jesus Christ. But you must consider him. You must acknowledge him. And I thank you for your listening today. I pray that something was said that would bless you and cause you to get right with God. Whoever you are, wherever you are, amen and amen. Now let's close out with a word of prayer and ask God to continue to bless, strengthen, and encourage us. If you got saved on today, today, thank God for you. If you prayed the prayer, I want you to know that it's not about the eloquence of your words, but it's about the sincerity of your heart. I want you to know that if you said the prayer and you meant it from your heart, you're just as saved as anybody else. Amen. Maybe you don't have the seniority, but you're just as saved as anyone else. And I thank God for you. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord. We bless you. And we praise your holy and righteous name. Thank you for your word, Lord, that you've given me on today. I pray that someone was blessed by it, Lord. You said your word wouldn't come back void, Lord. And God, I just give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Bless, strengthen, and encourage your people everywhere, Lord. Send forth the spirit of encouragement and let it rest upon all the people, Lord. God, in the name of Jesus, God, and we're going to be careful to continue to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Lord, in Jesus' name, God calls us to consider, consider him in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, praise the Lord, saints of God, and thank God for you, each and every one that have tuned in. We look forward to speaking to you again, amen, uh, prior to us going back into our building. And if, 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 if you have a way, if you have a mind to, stop by and see us at the Living Word Church at 7160 State Avenue in Kansas City, Kansas, amen, on Easter Sunday or Passover Sunday, amen, whichever one you prefer, amen. Starting at 10 o'clock, amen, we're, we're looking to have a glorious time in the, Lord, in the Lord and lifting him up and giving him the praise and the glory. Look forward to seeing you. Look forward to coming before you again in Jesus' name. God bless you and see you next time. Pastor Matt, signing off. Amen. <laughs>